Hey, Tim. How's it going? Hey, David. It's going fantastic. I'm lying down here with my little podcasting friend who's on my his doggy cushion here beside me, keeping me company. And uh, yeah, we're ready to get into it and be liberty experts. Nice. So today we're going to talk more on the self-liberty aspect because we both agree that all drugs should be legal. Um, but we want to talk, yeah. I want to talk about uh, drug use and personal drug use. So, um, you right. know, I used to be a very stere fairly stereotypical partier, drinking, smoking weed and that kind of stuff. And yeah. then I got my Buddhist kick. And so Buddhism says you shouldn't take any of that stuff. You want your consciousness to be pure and pristine. And so you wouldn't take any sort of mind altering drugs, but that extended to me to why would I want to take anything, right? Like I shouldn't right. want to be reliant on anything. Like I, even if I had to take an Advil every day or these sorts of things, but then I recently had that challenged and like, well, if I had severe allergies, I'd want to take an allergy pill, right? If I have chronic yeah. pain, I would want to get rid of it. So it's not as if, if I was out of a neutral state, I would want to take drugs to get back into the neutral state. So why wouldn't I think it's okay to take some drugs that would help me be in an elevated state, right? So caffeine, for yeah. example. Um, and I still have a hard time really buying that. But you're someone who, you know, drinks a lot of energy drinks, is my understanding. You chew nicotine yeah. for the performance enhancing effects. So I want to kind of understand your mindset around drugs um, in that yeah. regard, because I'm still of this tendency, like I should be pure, right? I should, uh, I can achieve everything just by the will of my consciousness, let's say, and I don't need uh, <clears throat> enhancements. Yeah. Well, I mean, the logical extension of that is, have you heard of these uh, guys called breatharians? Who just, no, who only breathe and don't the eat? They don't eat or supposedly, right? They, they, don't, they don't want to take in anything external to screw with them, right? So right. Uh, they feel like they can get all the nourishment and energy they need from whatever, the atmosphere, the sun, you know, whatever. Yeah, um, yeah no, I mean, I, I share a lot of the same views as you. Um, you know, I think like drug use in general, it can be good or bad. You know, it all depends on the context and the dose and how you use it and what you're using it for and, and those kinds of things. Right. And okay. So as a paramedic, I give drugs like fentanyl, for example, I, I administer fentanyl fairly regularly. It's a fantastic drug for certain situations in certain contexts, uh, multiple multi-trauma where guys got two broken legs and you got to get them onto a spine board or onto a stretcher from the ground. I mean, that's going to cause an incredible amount of pain, splinting those legs and moving them and all those kinds of things. So fentanyl is a fantastic drug for that because it takes them to nearly an unconscious state where they're not feeling the pain and I can move them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is, you know, a way of using the drug, but now other people might want to try to use fentanyl recreationally and, um, and use it regularly and get addicted to it or something like that. And that's bad, right? So in one context, the drug is good. In another context, the drug is bad. So uh, context it matters a lot, I think, when it comes to drug use. And when so you know, that, all, that example hits on where my mind has a hard time getting over this hump is that taking a drug to return to neutral, essentially, right. is fine. But taking a drug to enhance neutral is bad. And even, you know, I, that is my view of intense drugs like fentanyl or whatever, mm -hmm. but that's the view that in my mind extends to um, caffeine as a drug and, and like, you know, lesser right. drugs as well. Yeah. I, I, and I generally, you know, I generally subscribe to like, I, I rarely take Advil or Tylenol or any of these things for aches and pains and stuffy noses. Um, because there, there are negative effects to them that I'm aware of, right? Like, uh, you know, usually non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like, uh, like ibuprofen and, and acetaminophen are, um, hepatotoxic. In other words, they can have some adverse effect on your liver. Um, there's yeah. also some beneficial effects to your body's natural process of inflammation. Um, and, and fever, for example, when you're sick and you have a fever, sometimes people will take acetaminophen or an antipyretic to drop their temperature. Well, your fever actually helps fight the bugs faster. I mean, it, your body raises its set temperature set point 
in order to more effectively fight these these talks. So taking drugs can sometimes. So I think it's just important to really understand what you're taking, what its effect is, and but it, there might be a, a situation where. Uh, taking acetaminophen. It's just like, listen, I'm in way too much pain. I can't function. There's things I need to do. I need to take it, even if it's going to extend my my illness a little bit because I'm, I'm getting rid of the helpful fever or something like that, right? So, so it, it may be perfectly appropriate to take it, even though you know there's going to be. So it, it's all about weighing, you know, the, the trade-offs, right? There's no biological free lunch. Like there's always uh, trade-offs. And now, you know, I'll tell you about about some of my, my negative and positive drug use experience personally, I have, uh, you know, I've tried, uh, I've tried weed obviously a number of times. I've never been able to get high off inhaling it for some reason. I just can't, I've tried shatter. I've tried, like, I've just tried my level best <laughs> to try to get <laughs> high. I, but some, for some reason I can't, and it's the same with smoking too. I've tried to take up smoking numerous times for the nicotine and I can't get it in my lungs. It's just, my lungs reject it. Uh, when I've tried uh, cannabis edibles, my experiences haven't been great. I, they, they, I just, I want off the ride. Like it's fun for about the first 10 minutes and then I want off the ride and it's yeah. like, it, it goes on and on and I can't, can't get off the ride. And that really bugs me. Um, I've tried MDMA once um, and that was awesome. I was an awesome night. You know, I was just, I've just gone through a divorce and I needed a night out with the boys and we came across this stuff and it was, it was a, it was a funny experience. It did not add anything to my life. It was, you know, looking back on it, I probably behaved embarrassingly. Yeah. Um, it was an escape for a night that, you know, I, I, I'm neutral about. I, it was, it was an interesting experience. You know, there might be a, a, a time where like, I might consider, using MDMA in the future, just as a one-off experience with the, in a sexual experience with my wife or something like that. Cause I feel like there'd yeah. be some wild kind of effects. And I know I'm not like, I don't have an, a really, I don't think I would get addicted to it or, or any of that kind of thing. Like I just had no desire to use it again. I have no real compulsion to use things. Yeah. So, so I feel like I could have an interesting experience just to see what it's like. And I think, you know, I just, it's a bit of an adventure, right? I would like to try ayahuasca at some point or DMT and see if I can gain any insights by unlocking parts of my brain or having my brain think in a different pattern than it's used to thinking. Now, maybe there's a way I can get into those states without it if I have years of practice and, and training and, and um, can learn meditation or something like that. But um, I, I want to increase the productivity and by to, you know, so, so it's a, like a technology to improve productivity in that case. Right. So it'd be to me like, um, using a, a snowblower instead of a shovel on the driveway, like a shovel's going to just going to take longer a snowblower. It's going to get it quicker. Uh, yeah. you know, I want the result. I don't, you know, so, so I look at it that way now. Yes. I use caffeine and nicotine and, um, you know, I don't think it's they're they're that bad for me, and they help me. But I am concerned that yeah, I probably overuse the things, so the effect that they have on me is probably diminished over time. It's like diminishing returns. Yeah. And I think that if you can take if you take breaks from these things for a while, that they're more effective when you come back to them. Um, and and so the nicotine has helped me right. Like I do think it has it has unlocked things for me where I can get into concentration and creativity come a little bit faster and better for me. And I can, I can, it's, it, it's productive. So, and then the other one that I do have as well that I have a prescription for is a smart drug called modafinil, which is, um, you know, a lot of biohackers use it and it, it creates crazy amount of focus and drive. And if I want to get, if I need to have some productivity in a day, or if I'd say I have a speaking gig, and I want to be on point, I'll take this stuff. It's not as, it's not like Adderall that really amps you up and gets your heart racing, gets you kind of jittery. Mm. It just inhibits parts of your brain that will make you drowsy, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it gives you kind of like this laser focus on whatever task you're doing. And I will use that occasionally, but I won't, I find if I use it for more than two days in a row, um, the third day, 
my brain is foggy. Like it doesn't, it operates below baseline. Okay. Yeah. So there's no, there's no bio, like I said, there's no biological free lunch really. I don't think with a lot of these things, there's a trade off to be had. And so I have to be aware of that trade off. It's like, okay, I need to perform today at a high level, but in three days, you know, it's going to be a travel day. I'm just going to be moving from one place to another. It's okay. If I have a little bit of cognitive impairment that day. Um, and I'm, I'm willing to accept that. And I, to me, I think that's perfectly reasonable. And if it helps me deliver a better product, and if I'm willing to accept the consequences of having a little bit of brain fog in a couple of days, then you know I, I don't see any problem with it. And the other, the final drug I, I will just say that I use is um, uh, testosterone. I have a prescription for testosterone. And you know I take it because I went to uh, a local physician uh, he's actually a private physician who runs a wellness clinic and he just did a whole blood panel on me. My testosterone was in the normal range, but was on the low side of the normal range. And it's a huge range. It goes from like 150 to I think 700 or 900. That's, that's the range, right? And I was down in like the low 200s. Mm -hmm. And this doctor made a good argument that said, you know, there's no reason why even as a man, like, yes, it's natural right now as you age for your testosterone to start to decline, but it also has negative health effects. Like your body starts to deteriorate a little bit. You have lower sex drive, you have less energy, all these things. Like you lose the vitality of masculinity or manhood or whatever, because that, that man juice is just not there. So he said, yeah. there's good reason to keep it up in the 75th or higher percentile. So we titrate the dose based on blood tests to get the level up where it should be. And it's dramatically improved my life. Like I am fitter than ever, you know, I'm more muscular. I'm, I'm more um, assertive, like at getting what, what I want. I'm not a dick or an asshole or anything <laughs> like that, but I, I certainly enforce my boundaries a lot more. And um, you know, I, I have a lot more libido. Uh, so th those are the, that's my kind of personal drug use. And how I think about drugs is it's all around context and um, accepting the consequences, both good and bad of the use. I do really appreciate you sharing all of that because it, it helps me kind of start to put that, you know, with reference to my own experience and my own thoughts. And it seems very difficult to have people honestly and intellectually talk about their drug use in a, in kind of a broad way like this as well. Most of the people I know who've experimented with drugs don't tend to go more of the like, you know, nicotine and, and modafinil route as well, but they also just take it for granted that they can escape as much as they want and it's fine, right? Um, right. And so like, I have a hard time finding many people in the middle ground, but it's also because they still feel like they'll be vilified or something, like there's a concern right. to admit this sort of use. and. Yeah, I'm trying to think like I definitely had addictive tendencies, which is why I really like pushed myself to stop using alcohol and weed where the two, you know, I was using a lot to escape, but I was also in like an escapist culture and not in a happy spot generally. Now that I am, it's like reassessing are there benefits or not? And I think the most important thing is to know that there are always detriments as well when you're taking a drug. But you know, when you talk about testosterone and modafinil and stuff, it's like there are like natural tendencies of the body and you should be able to augment those if you want, if you started to degrade, because, you know, my mindset is there's some ideal neutral, right? And it's all about getting back to neutral. But when I'm 70, my neutral is going to be bad and I'll probably be willing to take drugs to get to above yeah. neutral. Um, but I have this weird right. mindset that like, you know, in, in my youth, there's some like 40 year old ideal human that I just need to try and get to that. But with most other realms, I'd be willing to kind of augment and advance my life and make my life better. And so the thing that, so like in terms of drugs that I've tried, I've never really drank coffee. I've always been a very hyper person. So I've never needed caffeine. Um, but I did drink, I tried, I smoke, I really did enjoy smoking weed and I've tried cocaine and mushrooms and I really didn't like cocaine. It was very, I've tried Adderall and, uh, and Ritalin with a prescription cause I 
got diagnosed with ADHD, which I'm not even sure is true, but it was very similar that like, you know, you're at the front of your own face and you're hyper aware of everything and it wasn't enjoyable, but it's interesting with weed. I actually in like, I also enjoyed the fog hangover of it because my brain's mm. so hyperactive when I would be it's hungover nice from off. drinking. Yeah. And, but, and then I felt like guilty that I liked turning my brain off and I should just find right. a way to get control of it on my own and calm it yeah. down, which I can do with, you know, days of meditation in the right mm -hmm. mindset. But it was interesting that like even the side effect of weed I liked because it helped right. me calm and it would be a baseline to then reset and really, um, you know, but then, yeah, I think I really got impacted by the Buddhist mentality that you should be pure and, and like your consciousness should be in your complete control all of the time. Um, and I suppose there's a worry of one addictive tendencies, but also escapism because drug right. use yep. in all of my experience and in my peers experience was for escapism. I had it taken for granted that that's all it is used for, right? So it's like, oh, if I smoke weed or consume it in any other form, it's because I'm unhappy. That could be the only reason. Otherwise, I would just sit and be a happy Buddhist forever, right? right? Um, so it's interesting to hear kind of your experiences and perspectives um, as well. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, look, I, I am not, um, you know, I'm troubled by like, I, I think quite often I drink, you know, I have a couple beers when I'm out with buddies because it loosens me up and it makes me less inhibited. I have mixed feelings about that, right? Like I wish I could get there without it. And I feel like maybe I could, like maybe there's some underlying defect that, mm -hmm. you know, a little like low level social anxiety. I'm not good at small talk. I prefer to talk about things that are important when we're talking about things that are important to me or meaningful. Like I don't need any substances, but when I'm trying to make small talk, I feel like I need to have a couple right. drinks to get in the mood or whatever. Um, so that troubles me. It troubles me, you know, again, like I said, my stimulant use in terms of caffeine and nicotine, um, there's diminishing returns and I should probably lay off that stuff. Um, you know, but you know, the, the, the other stuff, like I, I don't have any negative feelings about using modafinil or testosterone at all because right. there's no like you know the the downside is i don't feel any compulsion i mean what worries me the most out of anything out of any drug is is uh this thing right you know? like i get a dopamine hit every time i look at facebook and see a like or every time i open up the game and next thing i know two hours have gone by and i've done nothing but sit there and press the screen and get all these little dopamine hits like to me that is a more concerning <laughs> addiction yeah. or compulsion um, because that is essentially a drug use too. You're getting dopamine hits yeah. and you know, your body produces the drug, but you're still it's drug use that, that uh, you know, so, so that that's probably something I worry more about, but in terms of like, I, I I've just gotten over this idea that we need to be completely natural. Like, I don't even know what that mm -hmm. means. We use technology to get from point A to point B called vehicles. Like I would probably be in much better shape if I had to walk everywhere or run everywhere. But right. I, I offset the lack of shape I get by from using technology like a car by going to the gym and dealing with that, you know. And so I just feel like my life is far more productive because I ha I'm using technology like vehicles and the gym and modafinil and nicotine and caffeine. These are technologies to me that have their ups and downs. And as long as you understand and go into it with, self-consciously and aware um, you offset the negatives with other things right and, and you can live a far more productive life uh, I think if you're willing to uh, explore some of these things a little bit I think that's valid and I also like what comes to mind is if the experimental nature was more robust right if the if I mean the like the the field of medicine had more to say about all of this stuff that I could be more certain how, what exactly the effects are and the um, side effects, then like it might make me more comfortable than trying like this self experimentation as well. Cause like with a car, I know very much exactly, like I can know exactly right. what it's doing and what the side effects are, but there's not that development with like self experimentation. So perhaps the, yeah. the more naturalist mindset is, um, sort of in the culture bit as well. In addition to the regulation, just being a hindrance. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, there's other things. I mean, it, you got to keep in mind the goal here too, right? Like if you have a clear goal in mind when you're using these substances, I think that's important. So like when, my, when, I, when I take Nic- Nicorette uh, and drive in some caffeine first thing in the morning, it's to get my energy levels on point, get, get my focus on point so I can do something that's important to me. Now, there might be other ways of doing that. Like if I were Tony Robbins and I had resources, I might have like an ice cold plunge pool and a right. trampoline or some kind of stimulant <laughs> other thing, right? And that might really drive my energy levels up and get me fired up. And I wouldn't take the nicotine and the caffeine. The goal is that energy level. It's that state. It's that, it's that burst of productivity that I like first thing in the morning. And then I go to less cognitively um, involved or tasks that that require less cognitive involvement later on in the afternoon um, that are just kind of on autopilot and easier to do. Uh, You know, I I don't use the stimulants as much. So, so to me, it's all kind of goal based and, and using it consciously. Um, And if you're using it unconsciously, like just out of compulsion, because, you know, you see it, you want to use it. Yeah. Well, whatever, you know, and even then, like, even if life sucks and you want to go out on a bender one night or like get messed up, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that occasionally. Um, you know, like use that technology, but again, your goal is to like, whatever. Right. But, but when it becomes a compulsion where I'm taking this because for no conscious reason, other than I'm compelled, I feel an urge to take it. Then it starts to become, uh, I think you're starting to enter problem areas a little bit. Yeah, and it's, it's really the point I'm like, that's being having a light shown on it in this conversation for me is that often in the past year, I've been wanting to get over a hump and knowing that weed would help me or something else. And I'm being like, no, I have to do it all on my own. I don't, I shouldn't right. want, I shouldn't want to use this. And then sometimes it'll take a month or two to get to where I am. So like I'm stagnant in work right now and I know what would help right. and I know what helps my brain, but it's also, I'm not sure of the side effects and these sorts of things, but regardless, it's yeah. this idea that no, I should fight through. I can eventually get through. So why not fight it instead of just, you know, I was take I was smoking weed like once every three months and it was really just helping kind of benchmark and stabilize my moods actually. Um, but I felt that was yeah. improper yeah. for some reason. Man, oh man. Yeah. Well, what, what would you say? One, one thing I'd really like to try is this thing called uh, 30 years of Zen, which is there's this neuroscientist, I think he's in California. He hooks you up to an EEG, right? This brainwave machine and, um, and then use a sound or music or something like that to help you get to, to give you like audio, uh, immediate audio feedback when your brain waves hit a, a particular pattern that's associated with Zen meditation. Yeah. Okay. So it gets more dissonant the further away you get from that mindset and more resonant, the closer you get to it. So in a few hours, like, like two or three hours a day for seven days, he can get you into a mindset training that's equivalent to 40 years of practicing Zen meditation on a mountain with a monk where you might be yeah. meditating in slightly the wrong way for three months before you realize you have to make an, an adjustment or something like that. So to me, that kind of technology is exciting and interesting. And if you could pop a pill and get it or whatever, uh, take a shortcut to it by using technology, I think mm-hmm. that's good. That's, that, that ought to fit right in line with objectivism as well because technology to improve your condition, to help you achieve your goals, all those things I think is a good thing. That's really interesting to me, particularly because my gut reaction is to be averse to even that, which means right. I've definitely been bought into some Buddhist mentality around, no, there, like it's no technological um, assistance is good because, you know, I did sit and meditate for 10 hours, 10 hours a day for 10 days. And I reached like really interesting, like hallucinations and new levels of consciousness and understanding but it took a hundred hours of time and I can achieve that much more quickly when I smoke some weed. Um, But it's like not as pure and not as deep necessarily, but I've actually been debating for months. Do I go do another one of these meditation retreats? Cause it's a big commitment, but 
it's very interesting to me that this idea of even technological augmentation, not chemical augmentation, hits me the wrong right. way. So I definitely need to introspect about this more. Um, and that's why I'm so interested in this drug conversation, because I know it's not, uh, it's, I don't understand my own mentality fully, right? But I, it's so yeah, difficult and, as well, I think, because of the culture around drugs right. generally. Yeah. Well, and even like you, you think about athletics and, and performance enhancing drugs and stuff like that and this constant, you know, it, it's it's a weird thing that we say, okay, drugs, you, you, you can do everything to enhance your performance possible, right? Like you can wear glasses if you have poor vision. You can, you can exercise like and use all these fancy pro exercise protocols, technology like ice baths and crypto things. But as soon as you take a substance or the particular substances that enhance your performance, that's bad, right? Well, yeah. everything an athlete does and everything they're trying to do is to enhance performance. And I would prefer to have athletic competitions where there's no limit to what kind of enhancements they can try. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course the people on the fringes on the, on the cutting edge, they're going to be trying things that are going to have detrimental long-term health effects on them. But it'd be good to know that. Right. But then yeah. they're, they're also going to tighten up those protocols and they're going to figure out safer ways of using it. And eventually you're, there's going to be almost all upside and no downside to the way we can enhance performance. If we just let people get over this kind of puritanical idea of, of purity in sports. Well, there's no such thing. I mean, people are born genetically different with different things. And like, I, I want to learn how to be the best version of myself possible. And every, like, if I could get bionic eyes that were better than mine, I would replace my eyes. Like I, I yeah. just have no problem with uh, using technology to make me a better version of myself coming, you know, but yeah, no, this, that's really interesting. And, and I, I don't even know what to say because I have a lot to unpack in my own brain. So maybe in a couple months, uh, we'll, we'll return to this topic once I have some newfound theories and maybe I'll have uh, consumed some yeah. drugs and, and, and seen how yeah. it made me feel. Maybe but we'll I, do a podcast where you're, where, you're, where you're high and I'm drunk or something like that and see how that goes. See how that goes. It <laughs> might be an interesting experiment. Yeah. All right. Something to think about. <laughs> All, right. All right, buddy. Thanks, Tim. Talk to you later.